It is possible to specify an S-Class Cabriolet in a form that goes very fast indeed, but in truth, uh, it's not the kind of car in which you'd really want to rush. Better to throttle back and savor the calming, classy way that this Mercedes eases you to your destination, removed from the bustle and noisiness of the outside world. Now, you could conceivably compare the experience to that offered up by a rival Bentley or BMW, but it might just as easily put your mind at the kind of feeling that would be delivered by Progress on a large large, expensive super yacht. Now, fortunately, it doesn't handle like one of those. Uh, actually, you can hustle this car through the corners with a surprising level of vigor, although the rather lifeless steering hides the real extent of this model's tractional reserves. Now, on that subject, we were disappointed to find that the Stuttgart maker still hasn't managed to find a way of engineering 4MATIC four-wheel drive into right-hand drive versions of this car. It's been available on the left-hand drive model since this design's original launch. Now, that puts this Mercedes at a disadvantage to its most direct 8-series convertible and Continental GT rivals for winter motoring, or possibly for that annual trip up to your Alpine ski lodge. Now, staying with established S-Class features that you can't have here, uh, packaging constraints means that the curved tilting function that dials out cornering body roll in top variants of the coupe version of this car isn't offered. And S-Class Cabriolet buyers also can't have the brand's clever magic body control damping system either. That's a clever setup that on the top versions of the saloon body style uses a stereo camera to scan the road, pre-adapting the suspension to meet changes in the road surface. All these things would certainly enhance this car's ownership proposition, but even as it is, uh, that is pretty complete, particularly since the mid-term heart transplant that has transformed the engine offerings available to customers of this model. At the launch of the original version of this car back in 2015, the core S-Class Cabriolet range for our market was based around a couple of V8s, both mated to a freshly developed 9G Tronic 9-speed gearbox, namely an entry-level 455 HP 4.7 litre unit for the base S500 and a 585 HP 5.5 litre power plant for the alternative Mercedes-AMG S63 variant. Now, following the update package three years on, the same transmission setup was retained, uh, but both those engines have been ditched in favor of the lighter, more efficient, and more responsive four-liter twin-turbo unit that Mercedes now seems to use in the fastest versions of almost everything it makes. Now, partly that's because this power plant can be tuned in so many ways. Uh, in the new base S560 version of this car that we're trying here, it develops uh, 469 horsepower, and in the S63, you're looking at 612 horsepower. That's nearly 100 horsepower more than the same engine uh, puts out in that variant's pricey arrival, the Aston Martin DB11 Volante. Were we to be considering an S-Class Cabriolet, uh, we'd certainly be attracted by the S63 model, for sure. AMG fettling for the transmission, the damping, the steering and the brakes makes that top V8 variant a more responsive performance tool. Plus, you get race start launch control for Grand Prix style acceleration from rest and a sports exhaust system with gloriously emotive selectable sound control. But then, if we wanted a more responsive performance sports convertible with a three-pointed star on the bonnet, then we'd probably prefer to spend uh, the same kind of money on either an AMG GT Roadster or a Mercedes AMG version of the brand's classic SL sports car, all of which might leave us reverting back to the S560 Cabriolet that we're trying here. It's 4.6 second rest to 62 miles an hour sprint time, is less than half a second slower than the S63, and both cars are limited to the same 155 five miles an hour maximum speed. Although with the AMG model, you can pay Mercedes an obscene amount of extra money to rather pointlessly raise that to 186 miles an hour. In truth, you can't go too far wrong with either of those options. And you probably won't really need us to tell you that both stack up far better in every regard than the only other available S-Class Cabriolet option offered in our market, the Mercedes AMG S65 model. Now this 630 horsepower variant continues to use the heavy old Afalterback fettled six liter V12 mated to that tuning division's equally old seven speed speed shift plus 7G Tronic auto gearbox. 
The 62 miles an hour from rest time, 4.1 seconds, is fractionally faster than an S63, but in every meaningful real world regard, an S65 would be the slower of those two models on anything except a runway or an autobahn. But as we've already said, this isn't a car that uh, naturally takes kindly to being thrown about, even in its sportier forms. In designing it, Mercedes had other priorities, going to a huge amount of trouble to ensure not only that you can comfortably fit two fully sized adults in the back, but also that these people will be uh, untroubled by open top turbulence and be easily able to converse with those in the front. Uh, that's been achieved here not only by exemplary engine refinement and sleek aerodynamics, but also by a combination of the brand's usual air cap wind deflector which rises above the windscreen frame and a smaller deflector fitted between the rear head restraints. The results will be best appreciated by those in the rear but uh, throughout the car even at close to three figure speeds it contributes to a haven of bluster free piece that few drop tops can match at any price. And Mercedes claims that it's possible to have a normal phone conversation in the car roofed down at 125 miles an hour. Well we'll take their word for that but it's certainly true that uh, with heated seats and Mercedes clever air scarf warm air neck level vents comfortably cosseting your neck uh, you're looking here at a convertible that you could easily find yourself using al fresco all year round well at least when the sun's out now further helping here is the way that the climate control system automatically adjusts itself for open air motoring there's no need to select a separate mode button when you have the roof down or to save specific temperature settings now you'd be pleased to find that when you want to put the roof up you don't have to slow to an embarrassing crawl to do that. Uh, the triple layered hoods uh, electric mechanism can function at speeds up to 40 miles an hour and it completes its acrobatics in 20 seconds. Uh, now once it's up you'll get yourself as quiet a convertible as we've ever experienced. In fact, at highway speeds, when you're traveling roof up, we found it difficult to discern any difference in refinement between this car and its fixed top coupe counterpart. Highway motoring is of course where this S-Class Cabriolet will be in its element, thanks in part to this car's standard airmatic air suspension. And this system uses pneumatic bags in place of traditional steel springs to cushion the car from the tarmac surface, uh, something that you're most aware of over sharp road undulations and things like speed humps and drain covers. For the rest of the time, the whole setup simply creates a supremely cosseting feel and it can make motorway journeys feel like a magic carpet ride. Uh, the system automatically lowers the car by 15 millimeters at speeds uh, over 75 miles an hour to reduce aerodynamic drag and if you're driving up ramps or at low speeds over rougher roads it enables you to raise the ride height by 35 millimeters. Damping is, as you'd expect, one of the elements that you can adjust via the settings of this car's dynamic select driving mode system. Uh, the usual comfort, eco, sport and sport plus options also change steering feel, uh, throttle response, gear shift timings and stability control thresholds. Or there's an individual screen that allows you to tailor your own personal drive, suspension, steering and ESP settings. Uh, possibly of greater interest to likely S-Class Cabriolet buyers though is this car's capability when it comes to semi-autonomous driving. To make sure that this S-Class is state-of-the-art in that regard, Mercedes has embellished the drive pilot technology it introduced a few years back with navigational algorithms that come as part of what it calls route-based speed adjustment, a system that's available as part of the extra cost driving assistance package. Now these anticipate traffic conditions and prepare this Mercedes in advance for roundabouts, corners and junctions. So for example, the car will automatically slow down when you're nearing a toll booth or a motorway exit and if you're approaching a queue of traffic that started to move, it'll slow to seamlessly match the speed of that tailback. Apparently the new technology also allows the autonomous system to function on a wider range of roads, although we still wouldn't recommend that you use it on anything other than a dual carriageway. 
Now, assuming that you have the optional pack fitted, it'll all work once you've activated the sophisticated active distance assist Distronic cruise control and pressed these two little buttons to the right of the wheel, one for active steering assist and the other for active lane keeping assist. Now, with all this working, the car is fully ready to drive itself, although it will demand that you prove that you're paying attention by clutching the steering wheel every few seconds. A uh, particular party piece is the active lane changing assist system, which will allow your S-Class Cabriolet to overtake by itself with just a jab of the indicator stalk and then slot itself back into lane as soon as it's safe to do so. Now all this stuff's important because, for the time being anyway, you simply can't have it on the exotic branded rivals. And by the time you can, Mercedes will have come up with something better. In this segment, the S-Class Cabriolet has always offered something better. More interior space, greater refinement and yes, extra technology. But buying decisions on cars in this class are usually made on less logical criteria than that and you sense that with this revised open-topped Sonda Classe model Mercedes begin to grasp this of huge importance especially in a convertible is the orchestral accompaniment from beneath the bonnet now the new V8s provide that the finishing touch for a car that might conceivably also be the finishing touch to the automotive part of your life <laughs>